We just arrived in Bratislava. This morning we woke up in Vienna and took a bus, literally just one hour from Vienna. It costs only five euros, so pretty nice quick trip to a different country, different city. Please excuse the way I sound, but I just got sick during this trip and I've been trying to recover. Today is all about eating Slovak food. We'll see how it goes, but excited to find a new city. So we made our way to this traditional restaurant in the city centre called Slovak Pub. Then ordered the Slovak beer. Again, today I'm not pronouncing any names because my Slovak is non-existent, even though I really, really tried. I love cabbage soup and this sauerkraut and sausage soup is right up my alley because I love sour flavors. You can even have it without the sausage if you want to keep it veggie. And I'm definitely going to try to make it at home after because it's sour and very tasty. And if it's cold outside, I can only imagine it will warm your entire soul. Then the main dishes arrived. If you like potatoes and milk products, especially sour milk and strong sheep cheese, then you will love Slovak food. First, the Slovak version of the Polish pierogi. The dough is made with potatoes and flour and the filling is brinza cheese, hope I'm saying that right, made of sheep's milk. Then it was topped with sour cream, chives and fatty fried bacon. I skipped the bacon, but the dumplings were amazing. Immediate hit for a cheese lover like me. The next dish is Slovakia's national dish and it's very similar to the first one, but instead of cheese filled potato dumplings, here we have sheep's cheese smothering little potato dumplings, which are similar to Italian gnocchi. Again, on top, chives and fried bacon, which I chose to skip, but I still enjoyed the dish very much. Again, I love sour and strong cheese, so this was a win for me. The dish is apparently normally accompanied by a sheep's milk drink similar to kefir. I was a bit apprehensive, but guess what? Milk and cheese go well together. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'd have this every day, but it definitely wasn't a terrible mix. Children. Surprisingly, it was well too. <laughs> a lot of daring situation. To finish off in good spirits, pun intended, I was about to down a shot of the plum brandy at a modest 52% of alcohol content. Because why not then, hey, when in Slovakia? <laughs> <laughs> I think I was convinced I was going to be able to check it down in one go, but uh, who, who was I kidding? <laughs> You want the rest? I can drink a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we had the whole afternoon to walk it off. For dinner, we went to what we were told is one of the largest restaurants in Central Europe. It used to be an old theater, and I'm pretty sure it belongs to the same owners of the Slovak pub we went to for lunch. As long as they serve traditional cuisine, we were happy. 
then kick it off with the Slovak goulash. It was more resembling of a stew because of the thickness and spoiler alert before the upcoming video, he said it was the best goulash he had even after trying the Hungarian one. To accompany the dish, these potato pancakes were the perfect option. They're like French crepes but made with potato and flour. Such a simple dish, but I immediately became a fan. I went for the garlic and cheese soup served in a bread bowl, which seems to be popular in several Central European countries. The soup was delicious and it was somehow cathartic that I was eating the bread along with it. However, despite how hard I tried, there was no way I was going to be able to finish the entire loaf of bread by myself. I would hate to know that so much bread will be thrown out, so I guess I have some kind of wishful thinking that they do something with it, but I don't know. We slept for 10 hours today, which was amazing, and now we're going for breakfast. I'm pretty sure we just walked into the most touristy and probably not the best pastry shop in the city, but oh well. We were there to try one thing and one thing only, these traditional pastries. One of them was filled with poppy seeds and the other with ground walnuts. My favorite was the poppy one, but both were pretty good. Anyway, after having my soul blown away by the wind, I decided to look for some donuts. All over Europe you will have different kinds of donuts and in Slovakia it appears that the common ones are these with jam filling, but please correct me if I'm wrong. It was damn delicious though. <laughs> Before we left the city for our final destination though, Dan bought a bottle of this drink, which is very popular in Slovakia and the Czech Republic. It's a soft drink and it tastes very fruity. While we sipped on this on our way to Budapest, I'll see you there right after this one for more food adventures.